Hi, I am Kajer on two wheels and hey, that's a prison uh, And today's topic is uh, hmm, It's a weird topic just bear with me So here it is uh, I've had quite a few people PMing me private messaging me this sounds really weird saying like this um, private messaging me on either on YouTube or on Facebook or even on Google Plus asking me hey why don't you get this bike or that bike and it's usually always the same thing it's always either a super sport or a super street fighter you know a naked bike a liter naked bike like the the smallest I think was something like the KTM Duke 690 or a mega trail bike like the Super Tenere, things like that. Now, I'm not going to de diss these people, okay, it's suggestions, it's questions, etc. No, no issues there, but I'm going to explain something. I like... Okay, I've ridden some of those bikes, not yet a proper super sport, but I did uh, try a proper uh, adventure bike, the Super Tenere. Um, but I like my motorcycles, my vehicles actually, to be a bit of a jack of all trades, be balanced. You know why? Because it, it's fairly simple to make a very specialized vehicle, especially motorcycles, because they are by nature specialized. And when, once you go down the roads to specialize into something on the on the motorcycle world you're a bit boxed in so it's really hard to make a uh, an all-rounder bike the only specialty motorcycle that is an all-rounder is the naked which is specialized as an all-rounder I'm not sure this made any sense but I think you you understood what I meant so I enjoy I appreciate the challenge of the designers to try to make a, a bike for everything like this one that's one of the reasons I really like this bike uh, conceptually is that it is a workable proper good jack of all trades it, it really does everything that's why I also enjoy the X the Yamaha XJ6 a lot because it, it is a great all-rounder. It is an all-rounder. It will do anything. It will commute. It will do sports. It will do a track day. And it will take you across Europe with not much of an issue. That's the hardest part. Easy. It's easy to make a super sport. There's a tiny little formula. You put a big engine. You put, you put good suspensions. You do this. You do that. You, you put aerodynamic fairings. You put that and this and that. and. There's no real real challenge. The only challenge is actually beating the competition. So it's basically a numbers war Where you can bullshit a bit obviously That's a good-looking car um, It's also easy at least conceptually to make a trail bike you need long suspension you need a um, I'm not sure how to call those front wheels which with which are like bike wheels with little uh, wires, little metal rods instead of being a, an alloy wheel. Big wheel in front, 17 inch at the back. Uh, drive suspension instead of uh, drive shaft instead of chain, etc. It's it's relatively easy because you have the formula already made. You just have to comply with the formula, and then you try to innovate something to make you stand out over the competition can be simply design or you can make some adjustments here and there or some technological advances but usually they're all relatively the same they might differ a bit but sometimes it's more purpose they're they're making a trail bike but they want okay I want this trail bike or this adventure bike to be more trail in less road or slightly more road than off-road so they differ slightly but the formula is that so the hard part is actually to make a bike that can do everything or nearly everything as the XJ6 will not do any kind of off-road but this one will but an all-rounder bike is much harder to build to, to design than a specialized one even the all 
the classic all-rounder, which is the naked bike, has its issues, meaning there is no wind protection. So you can make, then you create a naked bike with some fairings and then the design problems start coming up. How do you design the fairings? Because you're supposed to be straight up, so the fairing is going to be huge and ugly. So you then change the bike slightly to go, to be, so the driver is slightly bent forward, so you don't have a gigantic windscreen. And that's why it's, that's why I like these bikes. Plus, since I can only afford one, <laughs> for me to have, it has to do everything. I cannot buy a super sport and then buy another bike for commuting. That's, that's just not gonna happen. So, <laughs> that's why. I'm uh, not... And plus, I'm not really into that kind of specialized bike, you know? Uh, let's say I'm getting off work and I feel like I'm tired and I feel like riding slowly home or just getting home. I just don't... I'm not in the mood for anything. I just want to get home and relax. This one's good for that. On the other hand, the next day, let's say I wanted to go hit some twisties. Well, this one's good for that too, but if I had, say, a super sport on the first day, it would be painful getting home because I would be all hunched over and all aggressive like and I would just not be in the mood. On the other hand, if I had a super relaxed bike, like say a, a cruiser or a scooter or something that seriously does not want to do adrenaline things, what would I do on day number two when I wanted adrenaline and foot peg scraping, which I don't do yet, by the way? I wouldn't be able to. So, either I carry two bikes everywhere with me, or three or four, or I get one that can do all those jobs. None of them perfectly, but all of them good enough. Plus, one other thing. It's a bit retarded to make super, super, hyper, mega specialized super vehicles when 99% of your customers are not going to be able to, one, feel the difference between the brands, because the difference is so minuscule, their skill is never going to be enough to actually find any kind of difference. That's stupidity number one. Stupidity number two is they're not going to take advantage of it. Seriously, who is actually going to take advantage of a litter bike on public roads? Okay, maybe out of a hundred riders, maybe two. Maybe two will actually use a litter bike to 90% of its ability on a public road. And they're going to ride like morons. So, the rest is going to do what to actually push the bike? Track days. Which here are a bit of a pain in the ass to find, but, well, you get the point. That's why so many people say 600 cc's are enough. Well, they are, but I understand the, the lure of a litre bike. Ever since I felt the surge from the MT-09, and I suspect a, the litre bike is going to be much of the same, only more at the higher end and slightly less at the lower end of the revs. I understand that or just the engine is compelling enough. Just being able to let's overtake this car, th this car and that car before the intersection and boof, off we go. It's nice. But you're not, you're buying a lot of bike to use just a tiny bit of it. So a 600 is way more than good enough. Or the 600 range of performance, because there are 600s that, or 800s or 900s that have the same performance. And I'm thinking about the Beamer F800 something, it's going to have a much more powerful engine, but it's still not, I think, might be wrong here, correct me, please. But I think that's an 800 that's actually more in the 600 Super Sport performance range than the litter bike performance range which is nice which, uh, there's a reason for that which is usually maintenance and fuel consumption so yeah yeah that's the two idi idiotic things of trying to chase the the magic numbers from the manufacturers is that there's a point over which more more performance on paper does nothing it does not relate to real life because no one's going to use that and maybe it's on that line of thinking that Honda took their new CBR 650 
down from 100 and something horsepower down to 78, 80, 85, something like that. They, re they reduced the engine power. I think they increased the torque over the whole band, so it's a more pleasurable bike to ride. And it's ha it will have that oomph right off the bat that it's really enjoyable. But I think that's the idea. It's okay, maybe 100 is a bit eyeballing it on the low side. But yeah, who's actually going to use a hundred horsepower all the time? You're not. You're basically going to be riding around even when you're hard accelerating. You're just going to be asking like 70, 80, 90 horsepower from the engine, except under very special circumstances. So why not make a bike that caters to that? Oh, that ends. And this is the other reason is that this way they can sell the bike restricted so it can be sold to the A2 riders in Europe because there's also a tiny law that says the restricted bikes cannot be a bike that has more than double the original power meaning the restriction is 50 horsepower 48 let's say 50 and that means you cannot restrict a bike that's over a hundred horsepower down into the 50 horsepower there's a law there I'm not really sure why but I have the feeling it's due to the fact that the dealerships restrict the bike, they register it as res restricted, guy gets home and just removes the restrictor and BAM! You've got an 18 year old with a 100 horsepower bike. It's something like that. Okay, enough rambling for today. I've arrived at work-ish. It's not here exactly, but I'm not going to show you exactly where it is. As you might have noticed, I have changed my work location because due to the to what I do, I change work locations relatively frequently. This last year has been a bit odd because it's been almost always on the same place. So yeah, that's it. My bike rant of the day. Hope I didn't bore you too much and get your out.